morning. Today is Monday, the 5th of July, and we're in the 14th week of the Church's Ordinary Time. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading continues to be from the book of Genesis, the story of the patriarchs, and today is Genesis chapter 28. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he had reached a certain place, he passed the night there, since the sun had set. Taking one of the stones to be found at that place, he made it his pillow and lay down where he was. He had a dream. A ladder was there, standing on the ground, with its top reaching to heaven, and there were angels of God going up it and coming down. And the Lord was there, standing over him, saying, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. I will give to you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants shall be like the specks of dust on the ground. You shall spread to the west, to the east, to the north and the south. And all the tribes of the earth shall bless themselves by you and your descendants. Be sure that I am with you. I will keep you safe wherever you go and bring you back to this land. For I will not desert you before I have done all that I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Truly the Lord is in this place, and I never knew it. He was afraid and said, How awe-inspiring this place is. This is nothing less than a house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Rising early in the morning, Jacob took the stone he had used for his pillow and set it up as a monument, pouring oil over the top of it. He named the place Bethel, but before that the town was called Luz. Jacob made this vow, If God goes with me and keeps me safe on this journey I am making, if he gives me bread to eat and clothes to wear, and if I return home safely to my father, then the Lord shall be my God. This stone I have set up as a monument shall be a house of God. The word of the Lord. And the Gospel is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9. While Jesus was speaking, up came one of the officials, who bowed low in front of him and said, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and her life will be saved. Jesus rose, and with his disciples followed him. Then from behind him came a woman who had suffered from a hemorrhage for twelve years, and she touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I can only touch his cloak, I shall be well again. Jesus turned round and saw her, and he said to her, Courage, my daughter, your faith has restored you to health. And from that moment the woman was well again. When Jesus reached the official's house and saw the flute players with a crowd making a commotion, he said, Get out of here. The little girl is not dead, she is asleep. And they laughed at him. But when the people had been turned out, he went inside and took the little girl by the hand, and she stood up, and the news spread all round the countryside. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading is one of the most powerful images we have of our relationship with God. It's the dream that Jacob had at Bethel. It talks of a ladder, perhaps better to think of uh, a large building rising to the sky, a bit like a pyramid with steps on, um, like some of the other ancient religious temples in other faiths and the angels go up and down and then it's the voice of God who says I go up and down. This idea that God is with us, that there is community, there is communication with God. It's the enduring image that goes into the New Testament, the end of John's Gospel, not the end of the Gospel, end of chapter 1 in the Gospel. We hear Jesus say, you will see the Son of Man going up and down. It's God with us, it's Emmanuel. The 
are times where we struggle to understand how God is with us, there are other times very aware of his presence. But the heart of things is that God is with us. We seek him, we try and do his will, and we hear him in all sorts of ways, very often in ways we didn't expect. The Gospel is Matthew's much shortened version of the incidents that we heard a couple of weeks ago in Mark about um, the raising of the daughter who had fallen asleep um, and the woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years and touched his cloak. But this version is much shortened. Most of the details are taken out. It's all very matter of fact. It's all to do just to show that this is the power of Jesus who is the Son of God, which is the purpose of Matthew's Gospel, to show that Jesus is that way. But it misses the human touch. He just goes into the room. We don't hear what he says to the girl. We don't know if the mother and father went in with them. Whereas in Mark's Gospel we have all those details. But the purpose of both Gospel passages is the same. Jesus does have the power of healing, healing of soul, healing of body, and that we are one whole person, and that we can turn to the Lord and ask for healing. What we get, we don't know at each stage. This is where we put our trust in God. And we do know that we can't ask not to die. And on the other hand, we exactly ask that. We will die in this earthly way, but our resurrected eternal risen bodies will be eternal for forever and that's the faith we have. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, Lord accept our love and service. Christ has given us all a share in his priesthood. We offer our prayers and ourselves in union with him. Lord accept our love and service. Jesus Christ, you are the eternal priest. Make this morning's offering acceptable to the Father. Lord, accept our love and service. Lord, you are love itself. Grant that we may love you. Lord, accept our love and service. Give us today the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Make us patient, kind and gentle. Lord, accept our love and service. Give us the discernment to know the needs of our neighbours and give us the courage to love them as brothers and sisters. Lord, accept our love and service. We turn to you with the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty Lord and God, protect us by your power throughout the course of this day even as you have enabled us to begin it. Do not let us turn aside to any sin, but let our every thought, word and deed, aim at doing what is pleasing in your sight. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Have a good day. All the best. Some of you will have heard the news that's happened to my family. Please keep all my family in your prayers, especially um, Oliver who lost his life in the crash. And thank you for all the support you've given me. Have a good day. God bless.